Welcome to a special investigation episode of Crime Scene Time Machine. As always, I'm your host, Scott Roder, and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be investigating, again, the alien encounter of the Kenmore family in Las Vegas, Nevada, that happened in 2023. I previously did a show about this with Jim Cork of E.T. Reality, actually two shows about it, and then also did an episode of Surviving the Survivor about it. Uh, where we were met with much debunking debunkers. Uh, Although we felt that the evidence that we had was very strong at that time. But what we have for you today, as brought to our attention by a subscriber of uh, James Cork's ET reality show, we've been calling our attention to a new location inside of the video that we believe clearly demonstrates an extraterrestrial being, possibly some type of a gray alien, a tall gray, in excess of eight feet tall, with cloaking technology. We're going to get into the cloaking technology. We're going to identify this alien. We're going to do some character development to see if we can bring out from behind the shadows what truly is there. All this and more on this week's episode of Crime Scene Time Machine. As always, I love you, planet Earth. To help support the show, please go to patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine. That's patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine. Only the price of a cup of coffee. And now, let's start the show. Pussy! Time speed real quick. There. Not yet. There. Okay. So let's go back. So we see the head right there. Now look at the bottom too. So you can see that? See how that shadow goes away? Okay. Right. Okay, so let's go forward. So you can see the shadow coming in. Clearly... That shadow on the bottom is moving with that head. So the shadow here is moving with this. What do you think? It's about 10 feet tall, like that. And that's probably about the right proportion of the head. We're about three boards. Crazy. To help support the show, please go to patreon.com forward slash 
Crime Scene Time Machine. That's patreon.com forward slash Crime Scene Time Machine. Only the price of a cup of coffee. So as we wait for Lewis to get back to us with a more augmented version of what's going on behind that fence, let's look at a compilation of the meteor, allegedly, that crashed in the backyard uh, that night. So this is a compilation of all of the footage uh, with regard to evidence of the meteor. So we've got official dash cam footage uh, from the Las Vegas Police Department. We have several ring cameras. We can see, you know, what people are saying is a fireball. But let's take a look. See, I've seen shooting stars, and that looks way too big. So now we've got exact time and location. This is infrared. So this is infrared. So it looks green on infrared. And the optical uh, without heat signature. So this is not showing heat. If that was a meteor, it would have a massive heat signature because it's a fireball, right? But there's no heat signature. So now we've got a long wave infrared. And now there's no meteor. So there's no heat signature, but we see the airplane. But now we don't see the airplane, but yet it's we see It's seven hours. The, but we see the, the meteor. Very interesting. Now, this is verified footage. Um, we see another view from a ring camera or a security camera. We've got that address. We've been able to identify where those houses are. So it looks like it is coming right into Angel's backyard. Very interesting stuff. I think the most compelling is that there's no heat signature on the meteor. Now let's watch that another time. In the optical sensor, we see it green with a tail. And then with the heat sensor or the infrared, we don't see anything at all, meaning it's not emitting heat. But I wanted to get a little bit more information visually on how the um, heat sensors actually work relative to other items in our combustible environment with our atmosphere. So here to the left is a uh, normal photograph from a DJI thermal drone. And then to the right is the uh, infrared turned on. So you can see where the heat is emitted uh, from the thermal uh, camera, from the thermal camera, the top of the, uh, uh, the uh, telephone pole clearly has uh, heat coming out of it because it's emitting electricity at that point uh, to the wires. We can see the heat emanating off of the ground in the daytime of this looks like a California canyon. And I wanted to compare that to, uh, again, what we just saw of the thermal imaging of this alleged meteor, which had no heat signature. So I think that's very compelling. And here, again, is an example of a heat signature of a drone flying over solar panels during the day. Clearly, you can see that it will uh, pick up uh, the heat signature coming off of the uh, solar panels as, as, as heat. But yet, there's no heat signature in our alleged meteor. And now, the next thing I want you to listen to in... Uh, the other clip that has audio uh, with the um, 
um, alleged meteor, and we can hear a consistent audio in all of the footage. Take a listen. So clearly there's background audio on those two clips that match this object coming in. And now on the third clip with the dash cam, because the car's so loud you can't hear anything, but that is a third verified clip. Clearly it's the same angle, it's the same area. Uh, this has been verified. And then the fourth clip we have is from a self-driving car um, on a video. Uh, that also has no audio but clearly uh, we've got the object coming in so uh, i think we've isolated the object we've isolated the audio there is a sound with this uh, uh, thing as it comes through the air and uh, then we obviously have uh, the kenmore's uh, video about what they saw in their backyard in collaboration with uh, this alleged meteor and we've slowed it down to 10% and used a tracking software to track its movement. And I think the interesting thing here is that the um, self-driving car camera has the best, most unobstructed view. And I never see an explosion of the meteor like I've seen in other meteors. And I'll get some other footage of meteors so that we can see how a meteor explodes when it gets into the atmosphere and burns up. But uh, this has no heat signature, and we're going to put the infrared on the next one, and let's take a look. Here's the Vegas uh, Meteor with an X-ray filter, with a duotone filter, and then with a negative image filter. Now back to the ring camera. And the body cam audio video of the alien in Vegas. And now back to London. There's clearly no sound with that one. You could hear the room tone and his astonishment. So clearly that fireball had no sound to it. But yet in Vegas, listen to this, the ring camera with audio and then the body... And then here we have, uh, again, we're going through the audio, but now here's some additional footage of meteors you be the that explode through the atmosphere. This is one is in Japan in 2020. You can clearly see how a meteor explodes in the atmosphere with a trail of fire. And then this one is a pretty fantastic video. I think like from this morning, Russia, courtesy of a meteorite explosion a meteor and a prime in viewing and spot for many was disintegrating the through wheel. the atmosphere and burning up. There's another one, this is the same the Russian meteor. But you can clearly see ride, the behavior of a meteor as it comes in. Uh, it has an explosion where it breaks up in the atmosphere. And there's typically no noise with it. The and here's one in London in that is about the same distance apart, as some of the other ones uh, that we got internet. in Las Vegas, and clearly London, there's no audio. This is Chelyai Binks, which was in the meteor shower zone. The explosive light. Now, on this next one, I find it really compelling with regard to the audio. There is no sound with the meteor, with the shooting stars, you don't hear them, okay? But if you look at the one in Las Vegas, you hear that one, why? Wow. Wow. You can clearly hear that that's what we call room tone, an atmospheric tone, that hum, so there was no sound with this one.
To help support the show, please go to patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine. That's patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine. Only the price of a cup of coffee. Pussy. And if you enjoyed the show, please go to patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine and show your support. It's only the price of a cup of coffee. Good morning, Lewis. How are you today? Awesome. Excellent. First, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for uh, participating in in this uh, project. Uh, a little bit different than what we normally do. You know, obviously, you know, you and I typically work on uh, reconstructing homicides, car accidents, and, and, and all these kinds of things for, um, uh, for our day job. That's a, a bit of a side project that we're working on uh, where we are trying to identify what is going on behind the fence in this video from the Kenmore family in Las Vegas, Nevada in uh, 2023 and uh i know uh you know i really i really love this character that you've developed now based on what we've seen in the video uh this character now is sized to scale and has been uh put into the video as an artifact now before you know you know, we're going to get a lot of debunkers out there saying, well, how do we know that the original video doesn't have a foreign artifact in it? So my question to you as an expert in the field of uh, computer animation, video editing, uh, video analysis, um, what have you been able to determine with regard to the original video and whether or not this thing that we see here this entity. So my question to you is, how uh, can we be so sure that the original video does not have any artifacts in it adding in uh, these uh, these beings? The key point to, to notice this, uh, it's the lighting, like uh, I said before in a previous uh, meeting. So you, you can be sure that uh, there is something in the video. Because normally when we do a digital compositing, uh, there, there is a, a, a way or, or path that normally you can see in the pixels. Because uh, as you know, uh, at the moment to, to add other elements, uh, make some overlays at the moment to create the compositing. You can you can see the different uh, in the in the pixelization and the pixels, uh, but this uh, video has not been altered in any way. It's a original source. It's a original video. After a review several several times uh, and use a specialist uh, special soft software to track all this uh, motion vector motion. I noticed that the, the, the this shadow that you can see over the fence in reality is, is it's in the video. Uh, it's not uh, been placed for uh, an artist or, or, or any any uh, special uh, guy that do uh, special effects or or uh, stuff like that. As you can see in my screen, uh, you can see this uh, this uh, right. Yeah, those are our tracking uh... tracking point. Tracking points uh, of all things moving uh, in the environment. Exactly. I see. So, so this is how the light 
is refracting off of the object that's moving. Is that correct? Right, right. That's correct. So the key point here is try to understand the, the, the shadow of the head of this uh, entity. It's in reality in the video. Uh, at the moment, you use a uh, special software to track the motion of the vector, like uh, I said before. Uh, after it makes some stabilization of the video, and then uh, uh, make a, a technique use a special uh, effect name, a uh, match move. I noticed that uh, in reality, the motion, uh, uh, the vector motion and the shadow uh, follow perfectly without uh, any any error because uh, when when you uh, mix uh, several layers in compositing using uh, digital compositing software there is always a kind of a little range of error in the motion of the pixels but this match perfectly match perfectly so I can tell you uh, that this entity this uh, the film, this, uh, this uh, artifact or whatever, at the moment, uh, is there. It's, it's into the frame. It's into the scene. In reality, it's there. It's not coming from any other source. Very important point to make, and I thank you for that, because I was talking with you know some other folks in in the field uh, of uh, ufology, and of course you know they're not scientists. You know the people that I was talking to are they're journalists and so on, and and people are very and and also uh, spoke to uh, a Harvard professor uh, Avi Loeb, uh, who is an astrophysicist. Uh, although his, obviously his area of expertise is not video analysis, like, like ours and, and particularly yours are in this particular matter. And they always uh, kind of, uh, say something of, well, we can't trust, uh, anything on video unless they personally capture it. And, uh, you know, I think that what we're able to demonstrate is that's not true. You can analyze a video that you are not the original uh, capture of, or you were not the photographer, you were not the videographer, uh, or you don't even have the original phone. We can take a video and look at whether or not there is an artificial artifact added to it or not. And in this case, we can definitively say to a degree of scientific certainty that this entity, this thing in the video is there in the physical reality in which the Kenmore family is also there. Would you agree with that statement? Definitely, definitely. It's true. Right. It's there. So after I analyze the, the motion of this the shadow, do you see the this, this lines, this color, the, the squares in the screen? Yes. This was the, the first uh, element to, ca to capture the, the motion. And you see it matches perfectly the motion of the shadow behind. Yes, it does. You see this, this, this little square here, it represents the, the motion of the, the foot, mm. the leg. That is so convincing to me, the motion of the leg as, as, and, and, and I keep going like this is so critical because you can clearly see through the slots in the fence that there is a leg motion moving from the right to the left side of the screen. And, uh, clearly it is behind there. So this isn't just like a head floating in space. This is a head of, a, uh, that is, uh, somehow that does not have full opacity. I think you previously determined that this opacity, that the opacity of the head of the shadow is only at about 33% opacity versus a normal shadow, which would be at a hundred percent opacity or an object in the screen, which is at a hundred percent. And this isn't anything that you did. It's just what you were able to determine that this shadow being or this being in the shadows possibly creating its own shadow or smoky filter or cloaking uh, a technique uh, is not only cloaking itself from the people there, 
but cloaking itself from the camera itself in that it's minimizing our ability to identify pixels inside of that shadow. Exactly. exactly. Angel said in one of his interviews that, uh, you know, he was eight to 10 feet tall, which is what we have here. Uh, skinny body, big eyes, and it looked like his leg was crooked or broken. So you've added here kind of a, 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 a uh, insect uh, style uh, leg feature um, so that we could still get the normal motion of a walk, walk gait, but have an additional uh, reverse oriented uh, appendage joint uh, to reflect uh, the possible perception of, uh, you know, a human with some sort of ontological shock, seeing this being, being totally surprised, shocked, frozen, possibly uh, from some sort of a, uh, just the shock of seeing a creature like this would freeze you, would scare you. And when he said he had a crooked leg or a broken leg, I think you've really captured that uh, to a degree of accuracy. And with uh, something that works in the in the world of uh, human, or not human, but the world of biology, we we know that there's insects that have this kind of leg configuration. It works on the 3D model, uh, and uh, I think we've got the size, the scale, the density of the being uh, correct. So uh, I'm I'm really pleased with this. So it's like an eight foot person beside it, and another one inside, and it has big eyes and looking at us, and it's over. Okay, where is this on your property? Uh, in my backyard. I swear to God, this is not a dope. This is actually we so just terrify it. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard. Correct, and they're very large. They're okay. like eight foot, nine feet, ten foot. I don't know. They're, they look like they look like aliens to us. Big eyes. They have big eyes. Okay. Like like I can't explain it. And big mouth. They're shiny eyes and and they're not human. They're 100 percent not human. To help support the show, please go to patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine. That's patreon.com forward slash crime scene time machine. Only the price of a cup of coffee. And now, the end of the show. To the mysterious beings who may be watching, listening, or even among us, we extend an open invitation for transparency and revelation. We urge you to step out of the shadows and reveal yourselves without the aid of cloaking devices. We are not afraid, nor do we seek to sensationalize your existence. Rather, we invite you to operate in the open, engaging with us in a spirit of mutual understanding and cooperation. As the veil of secrecy begins to lift, the time for disclosure is upon us. We see you, we acknowledge your presence, and we are ready to embrace the reality of your existence. The question that remains is simple yet profound. Who are you and what is your purpose in our world? Let us embark on a journey of discovery together, seeking answers to the mysteries that have eluded us for so long. The path to understanding begins with dialogue and openness. We await your response with anticipation and an unwavering commitment to uncover the truth that lies beyond the veil of secrecy. As always, I've been your host, Scott Roeder. This has been Crime Scene Time Machine, and I love you, everybody here on planet Earth. See you next time.